Can I just ask you, Billy, what does it feel like when you're dancing? Okay, so Ruthie, we're here to celebrate the amazing success of Billy Elliot. Yes. And now more than ever, you know, it's going into cinemas, people are going to be able to watch it all over the country, all over the world. What is the enduring appeal of this story? Well, it's, it's so inspiring because it's the story of a boy who basically, you know, gets out of the life that he's... He, he, is really a foregone conclusion for him, mm -hmm. which is to follow his father into the pit. Um, and be a minor and he gets to change his life because he meets this teacher and um, and I think that is so inspiring and by um, changing his life he changes those around him you know his father is a very different father mm -hmm. from the beginning of the show to the end of the show and it's amazing what you know love and passion can do. Sure. So you play his teacher, you're the person that in a way you do change his life. Did you have somebody in your life when you were starting out that kind of did for Billy, um, or did for you what you, you do for Billy? I did. I had a lady, funnily enough, my dance teacher at school, at Bullerswood School for Girls, she was called Mrs. Tapp. Can you believe that? <laughs> what a name. Um, but she was very, very inspiring and kind of saw the talent in me and really nurtured it. Um, did you have that electricity sort of light bulb yes. moment when you're like, this yes. feels so good, this is what I love? Yes, I did. Um, the first time I went to ballet, I remember thinking, oh my goodness, this is it. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of, it was like somebody turned on a light switch. Aha, I had that aha moment and <clears throat> I knew what I wanted to do for the rest of my life at the age of 10, which is pretty amazing to have that kind of because then then I was absolutely focused absolutely and you say you know the set phrase sort of never work with children never work with animals obviously you are working with children work here with, <laughs> you work with animals because probably they poo on stage but uh, the children are phenomenal okay. um, they light up my life when I come in I am completely in love with them and um, you know you know you love your own children but other people's children they come around for play dates and they're very nice and everything but you tolerate them you tolerate them <laughs> This, I'm just completely in love with children. Now. Is that easy for you because you started at such a young age? Do you find it sort of easy to then kind of relate to these boys who are having this really gruelling schedule, don't they, really, at such a young age? Yes, because I had to really push myself um, because I physically my body wasn't that of a, you know, uh, uh, it wasn't the body a dancer really needed, so I had to keep pushing and pushing. But these boys do. They do stuff. And, and I was talking to the choreographer and I said... Oh my goodness, they're flipping off a piano. They're doing this, they're doing that. She said, we just don't tell them it's hard. <laughs> but that's it. So with all in the mindset, isn't it? Mm. That's it with kids, isn't it? They, 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 they are the ones that can achieve so much when they're little because they don't have the fear that we have. Do you, talking of that fear, do you kind of find the West End lifestyle, obviously it must be addictive because you know, you're still doing all these years later. How intense is that? Um... I don't know about intense, but we are awfully privileged and lucky to be in it because, you know, we get to dress up and have fun and, um, I mean, it's, it's hard work, but we get to do our passion for a living and somebody pays us for it. So, you know, it, it's a bit nutty, really. Yeah. Um, and I think it's to never, ever take that for granted and never, ever uh, let it be just a job. How much work is it for you then in terms of looking after your voice and sort of the hours that you're spending here? I mean, we can see the rehearsal going on behind us. Well, it's constant. It's absolutely constant. You, you have to keep your voice um, going all the time, you, uh, y whether you're in work or not. You have to keep, you know, your body in... If you want certain roles, you've got to look a certain way. Yeah. Is this a role that you always wanted? Yes. <laughs> Ever since I saw the show, I thought... Oh, and it was very bizarre because I saw the film at Christmas and when I got back from holiday, I, I phoned my agent and I said, you know, um, don't suppose you know if Mrs. Wilkinson is up? She said, you're psychic. She said, they've just phoned up. She said, to find out your availability. And it was like, no. Wow. So it was kind of very... It's timing yeah meant to be now you have a great song um razzle dazzle oh, yeah. personal favorite of mine what do you think what's the essence of sort of razzle dazzle for you uh, well the number's called shine and it's basically she's telling her children she's showing her children you know how to be 
you know, how to show off, how to shine, how to, you know, to be the best. And she pushes these children who most of them will end up sort of, you know, marrying at 19, having children by 20 and um, never going into anything to do with dancing, mm. you know. So, and she knows that really in some respects, but she still hopes that she'll find that talent. Yep. And then she finds Billy and, you know, Billy's come along once in a blue moon, you know, yeah. that child that is extraordinary. I guess that's what's interesting for her, from her point of view, from Miss Wilkinson's point of view, actually, she's waiting. Her break, in a way, is through Billy, yeah. and she wants him to come along, and then he does. So it, she's, in a way, living, I guess, vicariously through him, would you say? Uh, very much so. I mean, I've, I've always said to myself that Mrs Wilkinson was probably very talented, mm. but um, maybe she got pregnant and um, never quite achieved her dream, and so she can see that dream in Billy maybe but also a sense of getting him out of what is a foregone conclusion really for his life yeah. you know I guess that's the power of this play and I know lots of lots of men actually come and see this and end up crying where they sort of wouldn't if they were watching other productions and I guess it is you know this little boy that's kind of caught up in a big political sort of social mess but this is what's so beautiful about the piece is I remember the minor strike and it's set against this um, real situation that happened and destroyed communities and families. And so it adds the drama to it. Do you think people are more moved by Billy's story and his, you know, the losing of his mum and that sort of grief and dealing with his own kind of inner battles or sort of the, the broader sort of what was going on with the mining strike, etc.? Oh, I think that the mining strike brings enormous um, emotion to the whole show. Um, because it was a terrible situation and it, it seems to me that there was an awful lot of you know you had Thatch and you had Heseltine and they were both on a big old power trip you know in the end and, and I think in hindsight everything could have been so different but um, I, I think you know more than anything it's the story of hope with, with Billy and how you know his this this family that are broken from the mother dying the father is he's completely broken and doesn't know what to do with himself the older brother's angry and furious with life and and billy is lost and this dancing just unites them all there's almost like um, a character in this play that everybody can kind of slightly latch on to and sort of yeah emulate in some way or you know associate themselves with are you excited for the fact that this is now going in cinemas and you know theater is something that actually a lot of people don't get to see yeah. not everyone goes to the theater kind of it's opening up isn't it to a whole new audience that's incredible it's wonderful that we can take it out to, to people who um physically can't get down to london uh you know can't afford the ticket um certainly couldn't afford to take the whole family and then for the the price of a cinema ticket they get to see the show and it is live it's exactly as we would do it you know a few extra treats of course <laughs> i was gonna say you can do anything sort of special that you wouldn't maybe normally do on a normal no, night no no not uh, not us as the cast but of course the billy's doing a you know mash up and um i'm sure there'll be some um special guests and what have you so and there are many billies aren't there do you find that when you're working with different billies do you sort of interact differently with yes. them yes they are very different the boys um they're saying the same lines and they're dancing the same steps um albeit they they do um you know change it to each boy like one of the boys is really good at flipping so the electricity is much more um geared towards his you know acrobatic skills but yeah they they um they are so different. They couldn't be more different mm -hmm. physically and emotionally. Yeah. And it's beautiful watching them grow. It That's must be amazing. Time. Yeah, and that, that great age. just got that raw thing. And then you watch them become actors and you watch them just blossom. And it's a real privilege. Yes. Um, finally, we're from the fan carpet today and I wanted to ask you, what are you a fan of? And it could be anything in life. Oh, gosh. Um, what am I a fan of? I'm a fan of telling the truth. 
What do you have done today? Say beautifully for us. <laughs> love. Of course, oh, yes. love. Love, love. Oh, I'm a special performance. <laughs> Billy Elliot, the musical live. <laughs> Winner of 80 awards globally. We're proud to be working class. With music by Elton John. Solidarity, solidarity.